Let me set the stage for you guys. It is a rainy day outside. There is thunder and people are scared. They're huddled inside just under their beds going, you know, in their computers being like, at least I can do some blunder while the thunderstorm goes on. And that's what we're here uh, gathered to do. Uh, we're going to make this optical illusion chain. It is completely geometry nodes. And yes, it kind of looks like an NFT, which is the word we're not allowed to say. Uh, let me show you how to make this thing uh, using procedurally geometry nodey thing. By the way, if you saw my candy cane tutorial recently, same vibe. So, uh, geometry nodes, actually full screen, don't want to make you guys uh, triggered by seeing the taskbar down there. Uh, we're going to take the cube, make it a geonodes group, and delete this uh, so that we can make our chain. Now, if you looked at the render before, uh, what it looked like, it was basically a donut with this weird swirly texture, and then we made a bunch of donuts to link them together in a chain. So. A lot of orders of operations, right? We got to make a donut. We got to make a texture for the donut. And then we got to put it in the chain. Let's start with making the donut. Now, I'm pretty sure there is no torus primitive. There's not. Uh, so we're going to have to make it ourselves. And this is actually useful because making it ourselves is going to allow us to make a custom uh, texture mapping uh, for our uh, distorted wave texture. Either way, I'm going to use two curved circles. If you haven't seen this trick before, ready your buttholes because it's going to be it's going to be a good one. Uh, we're going to curve to mesh, turning our curve with a profile curve into a mesh. Now, why does this make a donut? Well, basically, we have one circle, we have another circle, and we're saying sweep one along the other. And if you can imagine a circle going around another circle. That's exactly what a donut is. So I can control the radius of the donut. It's something called the uh, inner radius and the outer radius, or maybe I have those reversed. Either way, we have a complete donut control, which we know that we like. Uh, I wanna take this and apply a weird material to it. So I'm gonna use a set material so that everything we have here is gonna have a material. What is that material gonna look like? Well, let's define it. In the shader editor, again, this is going to be very similar to the candy cane tutorial if you saw that. If you haven't, you're like, what are you talking about? It's fine. Uh, we want to basically use a wave texture to get these stripes going along here. But if we just kind of connect it like this and view the results, it's going to look like that. It's going to look dumb and stupid. And it doesn't matter how we wrap this. X, Y, Z should be kind of close. Um, but none of these are like evenly distributed. You can see this is close, but there's a big stripe up top instead of like equidistant stripes. And this is because we need a custom texture coordinate space that we do not have because it's a, a procedural thing, right? Um, so you can see we have generated coordinates, normal. Uh, we don't have any UV coordinates, which is essentially what we want. To make UV coordinates, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke a coordinate system. I'm going to capture the attribute of the profile curve, this circle that we're sweeping along, okay? I want to say, where are we along the circle? And that's going to be our texture coordinate system. So let me show you. Again, a familiar trick. If you saw the last tutorial, I'll stop referencing it. We're going to capture the spline parameter, the factor. The factor tells us how far along the curve we are. So explicitly, we have a circle, and now we're capturing how far along this we are. Now, because we're sweeping it along to make the donut, it kind of goes all the way around. Either way, we're going to take our captured attribute and output it into this group output so that we can uh, actually send it to shading. Attribute, I'm going to call it mapping. And remember, whatever you call it, doesn't matter. You could call it, you know, chivalry's dead. You could call it mapping. You can call it table. Anything. Just make sure that you match it over here. So I'm going to type in mapping. And now you can see uh, we've invoked a coordinate system. What's happening here is it's black along the middle. That's where factor is equal to zero. And as we sweep along, it goes from zero to one in a nice gradient. Uh, to show you that explicitly, just in case you don't understand, I'm going to send this through a greater than. So when it's greater than zero, it's all white. And as we increase this, it sweeps along until it wraps all the way around is the idea. Okay. We use this as our coordinate system. And now you can see other than this, which we'll fix, uh, we have a evenly distributed stripe system since we know uh, our coordinate system as we go along this. By the way, what is this? This is a kind of a glitch in a sense. 
basically the beginning and the end of the circle matches here at this end point. So we kind of have a discontinuity. Um, a quick way to fix this is you just bump up the resolution and that'll make that smaller until it's like not perceptible. But we're also gonna be distorting this texture so it doesn't matter. What I wanna do is I want this to kind of twist and swirl, which really is the same thing as the candy cane tutorial. I know I keep mentioning it. Here's the trick uh, if you didn't see it last time. We're gonna use a tilt, not a tile, but a tilt. We're gonna set the curve tilt for this. Uh, what is tilting gonna do? It's gonna basically spin our curve, which you can see makes it look like we have this like infinite wave texture thing going on. And that's what's gonna make it look trippy, right? We're gonna set the tilt to be a function of the factor. However, when we do this, you can see again, we have a discontinuity because we have a tilt of zero and then it's increasing to one. So zero to one, we have a discontinuity. Um, in fact, it should be one full rotation or at least half a rotation. So to do that uh, in radians, we say that one rotation, 360 degrees or half a rotation, 180 degrees goes to pi and two pi. So you can see when we set this to two times pi, well, we want to make sure that we are multiplying it. Um, you can see when we do that, now our discontinuity is gone because again, uh, we want the end point to be the same. A tilt of zero and then a full turn of two pi if you know uh, radian systems. But you can see this is what um, actually gives us our spin. And if we now add a little, you can see uh, we're getting this uh, kind of nice uh, effect that goes on forever. Another way to do this is I think you could try, you could try adding on this coordinate system on the Z axis. That might even be a bit cleaner. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in hash frame divided by 30, which is too fast. Let's do hash frame divided by like 300. And that's going to give us this nice animation. What hash frame is, is it tells us the frame number and we're saying take it and make it 300 times slower. So now we have this. Uh, what I want to do to this is now make it into a chain. By the way, to make it higher resolution, we just bump this up. So nice and clean. Uh, to turn this into a chain, we just need to make a copy here, 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 and have them like rotate as we go. You'll see what I mean. So to make a bunch of these, we don't need to like literally explicitly copy and rotate and copy and rotate, you know. Uh, we can do this in geometry nodes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a mesh line. A mesh line is going to be a series of points. So you can see here's a line composed of a bunch of points. What I want to do is I want this to go on the x-axis. So you can imagine we have a line composed of 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10 points. Uh, because we have this set to 10. And I want to say for each of these instance on points, so on each of these uh, points instance, everything we made so far. So you can see now we have a bunch of donuts. By the way, they're gray because we can't um, capture this attribute. Our coordinate system does not work with instances. So you have to realize those instances. Uh, but you can see now we have a chain of them. So just kind of pick a spacing that you like. And now what I want to do is I want to rotate every other one so that it's kind of facing upward. So this one goes upward, this one goes upward, etc. Um, in other words, I want to control the, let's try these out, the X rotation. I guess you could also do something with Y, but I want to control the X rotation for every other one. So let's make a function. I'm going to combine X, Y, Z. So now we can explicitly kind of control only one at a time. And I want to make a function that says for X, every other one rotate. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to take the index. The index is saying what number um, instance are we on? So this is instance zero, instance one, two, three, four. We're saying take that and make that the rotation, which by itself actually works. If you wanted to uh, do it a bit more cleanly uh, so that every other one is flat and all that, uh, what we could do is we could run this through a modulo two, which basically says make this zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, um, et cetera. So what modulo two does is it, it's almost like we're going around a clock 
and we're saying uh, for anything divisible by two, in other words, the second, the fourth, the sixth, every even one, uh, set it to one or set it to zero, I guess, and every other one set it to one. Don't, don't worry about these specifics. This is just a way to do it. And now uh, let's control the number of instances. So let's go with four. I'm going to take this. I'm going to position it somewhere that kind of looks nice in our camera viewfinder. And, you, you know, you could do this, like, nicely. I'm just going to roughly do it and set my camera to orthographic, which gives us this nice look. And you can see uh, now we have this uh, cool thing going on. Uh, but we can do much better. Uh, we could animate stuff. Let's see, what do we want to animate? Uh, we could control probably not the Y, probably not the Z. Let's see what happens if we add a bit of X. Yeah, that gives us a nice rotation. So what we can do is we can add a bit of rotation as a function of time. Something like that. And then just to make it look a bit more confusing, because we just want to turn it into this optical illusion, we're going to distort. Doesn't seem to like that distortion. Let's see. So scale affects the... Um... Oh, by the way, we can make these stripes kind of like harsher by sending this through a greater than. Um, let's see. There we go. Now our distortion's working. If we add a bit of distortion, it kind of breaks up the pattern here, and it looks super nice. And uh, just to get this to uh, final render state, I'm just going to throw in a white background. So I'm going to make our background transparent, and we'll make it white in compositing, and throw in a bit of drop shadow. So when we render this, this is what it looks like. And, you know, the animation looks like this. It's nice and confusing. It looks like an NFT. Uh, we're going to take this and then send it through compositing. So in our compositor, let's uh, first of all add a white background. So I'm going to alpha over. I'm going to say take our image and put it over this white background. By the way, color management set this to standard to get a pure white. So you can see we can make the background red, you know, whatever color. And what I want to do with this is add a bit of a drop shadow beneath this. Here's a cool trick for that. We take the alpha, in other words, saying, where is their model? You know, this is where it is. We're going to take it. We're going to transform it. So we're going to shift it down on the y-axis. So this is before and after. We just shifted it down. And what I'm going to do is instead of just a white background, I'm going to say make it white, but then overlay black wherever we have this alpha. So it's kind of like an inversion. And we use this as the background. And now you can see we can make it a bit more visible. Now you can see we have this uh, drop shadow. So here is before and after. To make it more like a uh, shadow, I'm just going to blur it a bit. So let's see what this looks like. We take it, we increase the blur. This is then creating black, which is overlaid. And that's how you do it. And it's going to show up for every single frame. Um, and then you, you know, you run the animation and that's what it's going to look like. So I think that's the essence of it. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I'm back. Um, feels good to be back. And as always, at the end of these uh, tutorials, I pimp the ever-living, what do I have of a banana peel here? I pimp the ever-living banana peel out of my Patreon. If you want these three things that I'm about to say, uh, check out the Patreon. One, if you want early access to tutorials, uh, wow, I can't even say it. If you want early access to tutorials, uh, you can see them before they're posted live. Um, that's not going to be happening yet because I need to get my catalog back up and running. But uh, pretty soon you can uh, watch tutorials early. Uh, you can do that for a dollar. If you want the blend file so you don't have to make this yourself with all these geometry nodes, you can just download it. Uh, that is going to be available on the Patreon too. So you can get blend files for anything I've ever made uh, over the last three-ish years. Might even be over three years at this point. Um, and additionally, you get access to exclusive tutorials, tutorials that I do not post on YouTube. If any of that interests you, or you just want to support what I do, even a dollar helps, like seriously. Um, Patreon is the way to do it. Link in the description. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.